Good afternoon, Pastor David. Yes, it is. Nice and rainy. Nice isn't and rainy it, today. Oh my goodness. Welcome everybody to a random moment with Pastor David unfiltered. Pastor, we all know that the Omicron variant has been it's been spreading per se. And there's no doubt that we have to have concern and take the necessary precautions to to for our safety. I recently read today that the governor has mandated an mandated an indoor mask mandate for any indoor venues you have to wear a mask. Is this more about control and fear than it is about the awareness of our own health and safety? I really believe it's more about control and fear. I believe it's a way for the uh, governor and other uh, political officials who have uh, his same um, philosophy of governor, govern government, of the way to run government. I believe that it is a, a method to control people, to mask them and to isolate them uh, in order to continue to keep them in fear, in order to be able to better control. You know, this is a man who gives mandates, you know, strong suggestions, basically, that it's not law. He didn't have the right to make law by himself. This is somebody who is using the position of governor to, um, to abuse uh, Californians. And unfortunately, quite a number of Californians are very open to his, his tyranny. And so, you know, yeah, I believe that this mandate and and his way of regulation in terms of him stating that he's trying to do his best to to protect us is absolutely untrue. I was watching a news report just yesterday related to this variant, the Omicron variant, and uh, there's been a handful really of Americans who have suffered with the, uh, with, uh, the virus. They, they were saying on the news, and I was listening to a doctor uh, from Stanford as well as another uh, doctor, a pediatrician, and they were both saying that that uh, the statement that this this variant is dangerous is absolutely not true. They said it's very it's very mild, and I believe that out of the handful of Americans who have been diagnosed with this variant, one has died, and you never take a death lightly, one has died, and the um, fact is that it's, uh, it's, it's not as, as, as dangerous by any means from what I was hearing from those who are expert on the subject, it's not as dangerous by any means as the initial COVID uh, virus uh, that we in it, that we originally dealt with. So I, I honestly believe, John, and I uh, have no reason not to, because uh, I know that once one has power, they want more, mm -hmm. and that our governor, who has flaunted his own laws, I mean, I guess people don't remember that he was saying, wear masks and don't gather and then there's a picture of him in the French Laundry with his friends and political supporters maskless. I guess people have forgotten that Nancy Pelosi tells people what to do, but in fact doesn't do it herself, goes and gets her hair done, got caught doing it, and then says it's some kind of a conspiracy to make her look bad. John, um, I don't, I, I don't believe what they're saying is accurate. I don't believe what is being published is true. I do believe what they're saying is uh, a method to keep Americans, Californians, in fear and bondage. I really do. And, um, you know, I've heard people use very strong terms in speaking of them, uh, those who are mandating these things, and I haven't heard anybody say that they're heroic for doing mm. so. Well, you know, even as we, and as you always mentioned from the pulpit, we never be want to be presumptuous in, no. in these things. But I've, even since the COVID first came out, there's been this fear, even within the Christian community, a fear that has really paralyzed. 
and you know we hear things from Fauci, then we hear things from from uh, Newsom, and then we hear things from Pelosi, and then there's all these mixed messages going on, and you know it's taken the voice. I believe it's taken. Uh, the voice away from being led by the Spirit of God. Well, there hasn't been a voice of reason, John. There hasn't been a voice of calmness. It's a, a voice of fear. It's a voice that's intending to bring people into the bondage of, of fear. And, and for people like us, Christians and people like myself, who we want to be balanced in the way we look at things. I mean, when, when we initially began to deal with this, you know, I told our church, you know, we're going to have to close down. We did not know what was taking place. And I didn't want my, my, my people who are members of our fellowship to be put in to any danger um, simply because I had misgivings, which I did from the beginning. Um, so we did what we felt was the best thing to do to protect the sheep that we love. And I, I have no, no regrets. But we did that for a relatively short period of time, you know, and then ultimately I felt that this is something that's not just related to a virus. This is something that is really an, an attack on personal freedoms and um, the right to assemble. And when they began, as the government began to tell us that we couldn't meet, that we shouldn't sing, when they came up with all of these these rules upon rules, it became it became fairly obvious that uh, the concern for us wasn't wasn't truly what was propelling this. You see, it's hard for me, John, to believe that a man who thinks an infant should be slaughtered in the womb, that that person is going to think a person my age is valuable. Hmm. It's hard for me to believe that. As a matter of fact, I don't. If you will kill the most vulnerable in society, which begins with the babies. You will not care about those of us who are older who are also vulnerable. You won't, and they don't. They don't care, you know. And then when you look at the statistics related to the amount of children who've been infected with the virus, and and you see that uh, there is a very small percentage of children once infected that have succumbed. You see that there are comorbidities that are associated with these deaths. Sometimes they have cancer. They have breathing problems or obesity. These are things they don't speak about. They just want to, to show you that children are dying and you don't care, which is, which is just not true. It's just not real. Um, more children die of the flu than have died of the COVID virus. And, but you don't hear anybody saying that. And so Christians want to believe the government. We want to be the good citizens that we ought to be and, and, uh, and I, and I, as a pastor, do not want to lead my sheep into a place of danger. And so that all plays upon our concerns and in some places fear. But in fact, um, I, I believe that it has been exaggerated to the point where people are, are beginning to wake up to it, John. I mean, there's, they said you need to get an, a vaccination. Then they see, oh, you need a booster then they say oh you need a third booster and uh, let's just keep giving people shots right let's let's control them that way keep them afraid constantly you know you need a mask no, Fauci originally said you don't need a mask then he says you need a mask and then he says you need two masks <laughs> and then when doctors debate him people who actually know um, something of science that he is denying and then they they point things out to him he gets all arrogant and says that He's the incarnation of science. I mean, this man, I'm sorry to have to say it, but this man is the incarnation of, of megalomania. <laughs> and, and it's sad. I mean, when you put his picture as, uh, on, as a most sexy person and this and that, this, this little old man thinks he's very powerful. I, I'm sorry, John, but I, I just don't go for that stuff. I don't. I'm not sorry for not going for it. I'm sorry that he believes those right. things. And and all so getting back to it um yeah the governor wants to tell us not to meet the governor wants to tell the church what to do and the church doesn't take its orders from the governor amen when you look at this pastor in a spiritual even in a more spiritual level this is demonic would you say it's a oh absolutely spirit? anything that brings fear into your life is not of god fear has torment perfect love casts out 
fear. So no, anything that, that brings you into fear is not a godly fear. I mean, God says that we're to fear him. Right. Anything that brings you into a fear of this nature is not of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to the book of Hebrews, came in order to release those who were in a fear of death, in the bondage of fear of death. He, he came to release us from that and to release us from the power of the one who had the power of death, that is the devil. And so when when the church is, oh, I, it's, it's not a matter of, of, I don't want to get John infected, really. It, at the bottom line, it's, it's skin for skin. All that a man has, he'll give for his skin. It's self-preservation. It's, it's not self-denial. Oh, I'm going to love John and not get him infected. Therefore, I... No, it, it's a matter of I'm afraid that I'm going to die. And that, I think, is in some Christians' hearts. And with no condemnation to those who are dealing with that, because there are those who have, have, have that situation they're dealing with. But God gives us grace and, and gives us strength. And I, I, I don't tempt the Lord, but I certainly don't, I don't allow myself to be under normal circumstances. I don't allow myself to be dominated by a fear because as I've told our fellowship, and again, this is not presumptuous, this is just true. I've said, you know, the worst thing that can happen to me is I go to heaven. Mm. <laughs> so I'm not gonna- That's a win-win situation. For me it is. Yes. There'll be those perhaps who would be sad to see yeah. me go. But I don't believe I'll be sad that I'm with Jesus, so. Amen to that, Pastor. Well, thank you. I, I was thinking as we we're speaking, you know, what would be a good title for this? And, and I was thinking maybe Fear Has a Voice, Omicron, or something like that. Because, you know, we hear COVID, we hear these words, and it, just, it does strike fear in, into the hearts. And and uh, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. No, he hasn't. And so, well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing uh, on this. And, uh, and we look forward to having you guys join us on Wednesday evening. 7 p.m. and then on Sunday at 8.30 and 10.45. For tomorrow evening, Pastor, you're taking us through the book of Titus. Titus chapter three. So we look forward to that and want to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. And we have Christmas Eve and Christmas morning services. So uh, start maybe thinking about those who the Lord's put on your heart to invite uh, to come join us for our Christmas season, the real reason for the season. That's right. So Pastor, thank you so much. Uh, God bless you guys for tuning in. Pastor, have a nice and dry evening. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, God bless you guys.